Our uh, next speaker is going to be Marius Muller, who's presenting Back to Direct Style, Typed and Tight. Take <laughs> it away. For, thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, so what is this paper about? Well, essentially, it's about um, the relation between... Sorry? Okay. Yeah. Um, between continuation passing style and uh, direct style. So in the beginning, I first want to recap um, some key properties that are relevant here. Um, so first, direct style. In direct style, control flow um, is implicit and structured. Um, as you can see, there's a very simple program on the left. We define a function here, and when we call the function, um, control flow is transferred to the function, and as soon as the function is done, um, it's returned back to the call side. Right? This often makes it easy to read and write programs, which is why usually people tend to write programs in direct style. Um, Moreover, in direct style, you can usually use the stack, um, which often uh, enables a better runtime performance. So um, in contrast, here's the um, corresponding program in continuation passing style. As you can see, control flow now um, is completely um, explicit. The function receives as an additional um, parameter the current continuation, and instead of returning, um, the continuation is called. Um, moreover, instead of sequencing, we have to um, actually define new continuation. Um, this little done here is just top level continuation, and then pass this continuation to the function at the call site. So this um, explicit control flow often makes it much easier to optimize programs, in particular um, when control flow um, is complex. Um, and it's easy to actually um, implement uh, complex control flow in continuation passing style, because we always have the continuation at hand, right? Um, but, well, arguably, it makes um, programs much harder to um, understand, as you can already see in this little um, program, but it tends to get much worse as soon as programs grow bigger. Um, moreover, um, we cannot use the stack, so we often have to um, allocate continuation closures on the heap, which tends to um, result in worse runtime performance. Okay, so. Ideally, we would like to get the best of both worlds. So the vision for compilation actually is a workflow like this. So we have a program in uh, direct style, and then uh, we first translate it to CPS, then do various transformations um, there, and finally translate the program back to direct style um, to actually run it. So given that the transformations we do in continuation passing style um, are semantic preserving, we should, of course, obtain a semantically equivalent program um, in direct style. So this motivation isn't really new. Um, and actually, it already um, was a major um, motivation for the original back to direct style papers um, by Domi and Domi and Laval back in 1992, um, which were the first to consider a direct style translation. Um, in subsequent years, um, there were several um, further papers um, on direct style translations, in particular the ANF papers, um, which used the direct style transformation to actually come up with ANF. Um, but their motivation is different. They wanted to um, work directly in direct style, which works well as, soon, as long as control flow um, is trivial, right? Um, there are several more papers, um, as you can see here, and these are not all. Um, uh, but our paper um, is more closely related to the original direct style papers. Um, in contrast to them, we work in a type setting, and we uh, consider an abstract machine semantics, and actually we prove that the machine semantics is preserved by the translation of very tight bounds, which is why the paper is called Back to the Irish Style, Tight and Tight. Okay, so concretely, um, let's look at the initial example again. So this is the program in continuation passing style. Um, and now we can do a transformation, say quantification, which in CPS amounts to um, specializing the function f here to its continuation argument at the call side, resulting in the program on the right, where f has now become a continuation, hence the name quantification. So now translating this program back to direct style um, actually results in the program on the right here. Um, and as you can see, also in direct style, um, the function f is completely gone. So for these pure programs, this works out really nicely. And actually, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between um, direct style programs and programs in CPS. Um, but that's not the whole story, right? In CPS, complex control flow can arise, or we can 
uh, implement complex control flow. So consider this example. Um, we again define a function, um, and then we define a new continuation based on the old one, and then we pass this continuation to this um, primitive operator. Um, it, say it's an async operator. It does not return. So it does not return in direct style either. So how can we get um, back to direct style here? Well, and the answer, of course, is we need control operators. So um, in our language, we, um, what control operators do we use? Well, the first one is um, this control operator called suspend, which allows us to capture the continuations of the current stack, bind it to a variable k, and make it available in the body statement as here. Um, so, as you can see in the premise, um, it has a special um, typing judgment, so this hash here actually means that the statement S is undelimited, that is, it does not return. So shift, uh, the suspense sort of shifts into this undelimited world. But then, of course, we need a way to go back to the delimited world, which is why we have another um, operator here, which is called run. Uh, which takes a stack bound to um, variable k, mounts the stack, and then runs the statement as on the stack. Now, as we're in a type setting, we can actually give a logical interpretation to these um, control operators. And reading this hash here as contradiction, um, we can see that suspend actually co corresponds to double negation elimination, and run simply corresponds to cut. That's just a little aside, right? Um, actually, we want to come back to compilation. So now um, our goal, of course, then is to only insert these control operators when necessary. So the question is, how can we actually decide where to insert which of these control operators? And the key idea in the paper actually is to use a bottom-up translation with an additional output. You can see the, trans uh, the CPS and the DS translations below here, so it looks a little, little bit difficult because it's um, on the whole typing judgment. But um, importantly here, um, on the left, the CPS translation has an additional input. It receives the continuation as additional input, and it's top-down. And it's sort of dual to our direct style translation. So um, this direct style translation is bottom-up, that is, we translate the subterms of a term recursively, and then remember in this additional output here, um, which is indicated with this quickly arrow here, um, to which um, continuation these translated subterms actually return. And based on that, we decide where to insert um, control operators. Okay, um, right, so now concretely, what does this look like? So um, here's this um, primitive operator async, and as I said before, it does not return. So the additional output here um, is just empty. Um, here is a call of a continuation, which we translate back to return, um, to a return statement. And where does it return to? Well, of course, it returns to this very continuation, which we called before. Now, as it happens, these were um, the subterms of this um, body of the function. Now we can translate back that body. Um, and uh, we want to translate it back to a, to a sequencing statement where we first call this async operator. But as we can see, um, the async operator does not return, as you can see in the additional output here, so we have to install a control operator. And actually here we have to capture the continuation, which is why we insert a suspend, resulting in the program on the right here. So now the overall um, uh, statement returns, of course, to the continuation to which the second statement returns. And finally, now that we have this, um, uh, this body of the function we have seen um, trans uh, translated back, we can actually translate back the whole function. Um, as you can see, um, the body of the function returns to k, which is exactly um, the continuation which um, is the parameter of the function. So in this case, we do not need a further control operator as they line up, and so the result is the program on the right here. Now, this was not too difficult, but actually um, there are quite a lot of edge cases, in, um, and I want to refer to the paper for that, so it's not, um, not a thing you want to sh show in a talk. Um, uh, let me come back to um, several of the properties before I show in the paper. As I said, we work in a typesetting, so we show that the, uh, both translations, uh, CPS and DS translation, are typeability preserving and also semantic preserving, as I said, with very tight bounds, so um, you can freely go forth and back. Um, and in fact, on the pure fragment, um, the two machines even proceed in lockstep, so it's really tight connection. 
Um, moreover, both translations are actually total, so they work on the, on the whole languages, and which means you can really freely transform um, in both languages and then go forth and back. Moreover, they um, satisfy a certain kind of modularity or locality. Um, so, for example, you can take a single function, um, translate to CPS, transform the body, and then translate back, and it still fits in, so the signature really stays the same. Um, finally, um, round trips are also well behaved, so when composing the two um, translations, um, they have uh, certain properties in particular. Um, there are one-sided syntactic inverses on the full languages, and there are even fully inverse on the pure fragment. So, um, really, an isomorphism here. Um, yeah, and there are, of course, several more properties. But look at the paper. So, thanks for your attention. All right. Thanks for that presentation. It was also typed and tight. Uh, now let's get some questions from the audience. Hi. Thanks for a good talk. Um, so just a, uh, maybe this is already in the, it's, surely it's already in the paper, but uh, are the two languages the same? So in particular, does that mean I, not, I don't get to iterate the CPS or iterate the direct style? So the, the, the two functions are, are um, <laughs> not the, not you the, mean the, the <sighs> DS and CPS transform, but are they the same? No, they're not the same. So there are different uh, languages. So uh, one is really just CPS, and the other is direct side, which uh, has also control operators. But you can, of course, um, go forth and back as you like. So you can um, translate to CPS and back to direct side, and then to CPS again and to direct side again. Yeah, but I want to do CPS twice or n times. Sorry? I, can I do CPS n times? Uh, when no, is. no, no, no. Um, it's, it's, it's not. Uh, <laughs> they're not really the same. Okay. So you, oh, you well. cannot. You cannot do it again. You cannot iterate the CPS translation. No. Okay. Thanks. Future work. Yeah, future work. <laughs> um, am I right that suspend is essentially for license C operator? Sorry. Suspend seems to be for license yes. C. Operator. Yes. 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 It's essentially for license C. Okay. Operator. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, the other question I had was, um, you're translating into CPS in order to be able to perform various translations, and then you're able to go back again. Does that suggest an alternative whereby you could do those translations in the source language without having to go to CPS at all? Yes, I mean, that's the pretty much the original uh, motivation for the ANF papers, right? And for pure um, control flow, that's actually, there's not much of a difference, right? But for complex control flow, um, it's often easier to do this in CPS because um, there's, a, there's an example in the paper where um, you often have to somehow push um, continuations through control operators, which is often really difficult, right? So it's easier to do it in CPS and then translate back. Thanks. All right, we have time for another question, if anyone has one. Well, one thing I'm wondering is, who do you think benefits most from this paper? Like, as in, are, you know, is it someone implementing a probabilistic programming language or some a language of async await they should, this is like a compilation technique they should consider, or who do you think is the, the main audience? Um, actually, um, our true motivation is to use this for um, the compilation of algebraic effect centers, right? Um, Jonathan, who sits here, had this talk yesterday where we showed that we um, can translate um, algebraic effect handles to CPS, and we would actually really like to go back to the direct side. Of course, this is only a first step in the right direction here because for that we um, need the limited control and should have iterated CPS, and we were actually we were thinking about this, um, but it's quite a bit more difficult. But yeah, that's um, our true motivation. But I think um, this should be um, helpful um, for different audiences, pretty much everything who benefits from translating to CPS. Okay, great. Well, let's thank our speaker again.